Welcome to our third video in our series about getting this Great Lakes biplane back in the air. This video is all about inspecting and servicing this Ranger engine. Let's start off with the intake system. We wanted to hold off on it, but just because it's all open, we're waiting on some parts anyway, we are going to change all the intake gaskets. So we have the six across the bottom. We have two packing washers that go in here. And then the hot box here, we have two gaskets that go into there. Then we also have the gasket on the carburetor and then we have the gasket to go to the air box. So I don't want to pull the carburetor because that was changed somewhat recent. I also don't want to pull off this air box because hands are too big. So I think we can get into this little groove right here. We'll start with pulling off this little elbow so we can get into the bottom, pull all six off, take it off. We'll look inside. We have all the gaskets. Let's get it done. We are ready to put the pipes back on. So everything's clean inside. We cleaned all the gasket material off. They actually came off pretty nicely. But basically this screws in, this goes in here, put it back in, tighten it all down. And there is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve 12 whole gaskets in this assembly. So be happy to get it back on. Let's do it. The induction system is done. All new gaskets along the bottom, new gaskets of the packing area, new gaskets on the top. Airbox is back on, elbow is back on. We test ran it, everything is perfect. There was a little leak coming in one of the gaskets. I think it was just old, replaced it all, and it's done. Time right indicator is in, so we're just gonna quickly go through the process of how we find top dead center. So these engines have a lot of play in it. That's why time right kind of gives you the most accurate. The back cylinder is the number one cylinder, but the number six and the number one cylinder are both at the top dead center position at the same time, they move together. The scale is zeroed out. So what we're gonna do is turn the prop and we're gonna see it start to move up. It bottoms out, stops moving. What we're gonna do then, set this scale to zero. Now move the prop back, bring it back down again. And then we're just gonna test it one more time. So we're coming all the way down. Bottoms out, stops moving. We can check it. Make a little fine adjustment. And we're good. So now what we do and turn it backwards, put it past 25 or past 22, and then we're gonna move it in the direction of rotation. We're gonna see it start to come up, start knocking the propeller. We got 25 degrees, 24 degrees, 23, and 22 degrees. Now the crankshaft is, timing is set, 22 degrees top dead center. How do we know that? Data plate says it. All the maintenance books say it. We're gonna pull the magnetos off, get the new ones ready to put on, 
put them on, and then we're gonna go through the actual timing process with the intermediate couplings. We are ready to put the mag on, freshly rebuilt. These magnetos were kindly rebuilt by Point Aviation. It is amazing how this stuff is getting more and more difficult to source. So very thankful for companies that do these components and the final product was great. We have our new intermediate coupling, but we're gonna turn the actual magneto in the direction of rotation. So we have that white line lined up. All right, so because this one's kind of hard to get to, we're gonna put it in before we put the mag on it. The whole reason of having all these adjustments is basically that it would be very hard to get this thing to line up. I can get lucky this time. Light combing mags, very easy. You just put the mag in, twist it till the tone starts, and secure it. This has these really annoying little intermediate things or duckies. So we did it a little backwards in the manual says, but what we did is basically just set the prop to like 24 so that the tone should be off. And then we put the mag on with the tone off and let us know that we were a little bit closer. Probably confusing, but it worked. Both mags are pretty much right there, right under 22 degrees. So now we hooked both up again and let's see, they should come on together. Never used a time right before, but this thing has been pretty sweet, getting it accurate. Horrible directions, but. Right on 22. Think I got the chance, and I ain't gonna waste it. Honey tripping romance, and the hours have faded. The leak down test is done to determine how good the compression is on each cylinder of the engine. Ideally, you would want to do this while the engine is warm from a flight. We had not run it up and were thrilled to have good numbers despite the engine being cold. We also want to shout out Fresno Air Parts for being the home of any Ranger engine parts you might need, from intermediate couplings to rubber packing seals to spark plugs. It is awesome that they keep such a great new old stock of Ranger parts. Something we've been saving to the end, really, because I don't want to have to see how easy or hard it is to change these. But we got four new motor mounts. The motor mounts basically have rubber that's, I always forget the name of it, but basically chemically bonded to the metal insert. And then that metal insert is pressed into the motor mount with a little lip around the top. So that metal piece can't come out, the actual insert, but the rubber over time the chemical bond separates and then it starts coming out. So all of these are currently good. One is slightly sagging. There's really nobody that makes these. They sold new old stock ones for a while, but those are gone and those also were from the 1940s. When we realized we wanted to put four new ones on, there's really only one place that does it. Classic Aviation, gotta get the name, but they took the mounts, they clean them up, repaint them, put the new inserts in for us. Working with the guy is awesome. Sent them over right away and we have them. We're gonna install them. These came straight from Germany, which is pretty cool. We have a two by four to put underneath the jack. So we're just gonna take a little bit of weight off the engine and then we'll do one at a time. We're gonna start with the easy one that's in the front so that a lot of room can easily get to it. All right, so we're really just 
taking the weight off the engine. And we're gonna see. This is uh, new for all of us. Ah, and the engine didn't fall. Two mounts, new one, old one. This one just looks really bad. So, let's put them on. Anytime you take a part off that you can't see under it, you just inspect, inspect all the threads. Everything's clean, no cracks, studs look good, everything's all the way in. Okay, we have our new mount. That slides on way too nice. So that's the process, one at a time. We're gonna wait till they're all done to do the proper torque where they're all snug down, a little less than what it needs. That way we can just go around and do all of them together. Um, we'll do it with the weight off the engine, just like it is now. And we'll lower it down and, you know, hope it doesn't just drop down to the frame. But other than that, one out of four done. Went pretty smooth, so fingers crossed for the rest of them. We're getting close, so we're at the point. Start re-safety wiring everything. Currently no cuts on my hands. Let's see if we can get the whole thing done without getting any pricks or stabs. Everything is safety wired just to prevent it from coming loose or sliding out. Let's get that done. A couple more things to do before this thing flies. Switches off. All right, give it two shots. Hot, cracked, and breaks. Join us next video for the first flight in the Great Lakes and for some beautiful spring biplane flying. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next time.